Sumatra is a large island in Dutch East Indies. It is the largest island that is located entirely in Dutch East Indies and the sixth largest island in the world. Sumatra was one of heart of Dutch East Indies, which officially became a colony of the Netherlands in 1800 when the Dutch East India Company went out of business. Sumatra and its adjacent islands had a population of over 2,300,000. Most were Indonesians, divided into 11 ethnic of Malayan groups. There were about 6,000 Dutch and other Europeans, 140,000 Chinese, and 13,000 other Asians and Arabs. The island had an extensive and well-developed road system, meandering the island's entire length. Palembang, was the largest city and act as capital of the island, followed by Modan, Padang, and the Gautaraja area. The island also is very rich in resources. Agriculture produced rubber, coffee, tea, tobacco, palm products, and hemp. There were important oil fields and refineries at Palembang, Sabang Island, and Pankalan Brandanan on Sumatra. Two refineries, the huge Plajo and Songkai refineries, were located at Palembang at the confluence of the Musi and Comering rivers. Palembang oil field were regarded as richest known oil field in Southeast Asia. Production began in 1907 and by 1940 had reached 30 million barrels a year, almost half the total for the entire Netherlands East Indies. The refinery, owned by the Royal Dutch Shell, had produced considerable quantities of gasoline from the local light petroleum. The city could be reached by small oceangoing vessels via the Musi River, which was the usual means of oil delivery. The initial objectives of the Japanese in southern Sumatra were the main airfield at Pankalan Bentong at Palembang in South Sumatra and the Royal Dutch Shell oil refineries at Plajo. They needed the airfield to reinforce and resupply and to use as a base in the conquest of North Sumatra and Java. For the defense of Sumatra, the Dutch East Indies sent the second largest group of KNIL units, numbered approximately 4,500 troops, under the command of General Major Overaker. This force included seven garrison battalions and was scattered across the island. For South Sumatra, Palembang was the key city the Allied needed to defend. To defend Palembang, South Sumatra Territorial Command, which comprised about 2,000 troops, with one machine gun company, one anti-aircraft battery, and four artillery batteries, under the command of KNIL Lieutenant Colonel Vogel Sang. These garrison comprised of South Sumatra Garrison Battalion, and a Landist Home Infantry Company in Palembang, a Landist Home Infantry Company in Jambai, and five armoured cars in Palembang. In January, the American British Dutch Australian Command, or ABDACOM, decided to concentrate Allied Air Forces in Sumatra at two airfields near Palembang. First is Pankalan Benton, also known as P-1, and second is a secret airfield at Prabomuli, or P-2. P-2 airfield had just been established by Dutch command and not acknowledged by the Japanese. It is constructed in a well-hidden location, and even the Allied pilot had a hard time finding. The British Royal Air Force created No. 225 Bomber Group at Palembang. It included two Royal Australian Air Force squadrons, and a large number of Australians serving with British squadrons. The group could only muster 40 Bristol Blenheim light bombers and 35 Lockheed Hudson light bombers. These squadrons were stationed at P-2 airfield. 
Number 226 Fighter Group RAF also arrived at Palembang in early February. The units consisted of two squadrons of Hawker Hurricanes, transported to Sumatra by the aircraft carrier, HMS Indomitable. These units were stationed at P-1 airfield. They were joined by the remnants of RAF and RRF Hurricane and Brewster Buffalo squadrons, which had both inflicted and suffered heavy losses in intense air battles over the Malaya and Singapore campaigns. There were some 3,250 air service personnel from Singapore were withdrawn to Sumatra as well. At P-1 airfield, a ground defense force, under the command of Wing Commander Harold Maguire was formed, which comprised of South Sumatra Garrison Battalion of about 110 KNIL Dutch regulars with two armored cars, three officers, and 72 grounded airmen of the RAF and RAF, that were formed into ground defense unit, and two anti-aircraft guns. The Royal Netherlands Navy was represented by the mine layer, Pro Patria, and the patrol boats P-38 and P-40 on the Moise River. For the invasion of Sumatra, the Japanese would attack in two phases. The first would begin in mid-February when southeast Sumatra was invaded, and the other in mid-May when the northwest was seized. For this video, we will cover only on the southern part. For the invasion of southern Sumatra, the Japanese would attack through the Western Force, commanded by Vice Admiral Jisaburo Ozawa, commander of the Japanese Southern Expeditionary Fleet and of naval operations in the South China Sea. For the ashore operation, the core of the Japanese Sumatra Invasion Force was Ijea 229th Infantry Regiment as well as one battalion from the 230th, both drawn from the 38th Division, which had taken part in the conquest of Hong Kong. These units were commanded by 38th Division Commander, Lieutenant General Sano Tadayoshi, with 3,000 troops strength. Also included in the order of battle for Sumatra was the IJA 2nd Parachute Raiding Regiment with 350 paratroopers, under the command of Colonel Seiichi Kume. Taking a page from the playbook of the IJN Special Naval Landing Forces over CDBs on the 11th of January, the IJA intended to use its own airborne troops to drop in behind the coastal defenses on the 14th of February two days before the amphibious troops came ashore. These airborne units were tasked to seizure the Palembang airfield and Plajo refinery before the Dutch destroy it. At this point, the Japanese were not acknowledged about the existence of another airfield at Prabhu Mulai. The Western Force Fleet would escort an advanced force of 229th Infantry Regiment aboard date transport ships departed from Cameran Bay, into China, followed by a main force of 229th and 230th troops abroad 14 troops carriers. Escort ships included the heavy cruiser Chokai, Ozawa's flagship, 5 cruisers and 10 destroyers, as well as mine sweepers and other supporting ships. Also part of the fleet was the aircraft carrier, Yuzhou, with the IJN 3rd Air Group, providing the air support for invasion escort. The advanced elements, consisted of two battalions of 229th Infantry Regiment would invade Banker Island and Palembang, while the main force, consisted of one battalion of 229th Regiment, one artillery battalion, one battalion of 230th Regiment, and 38th Division Headquarter would land at Palembang and extend the military gains of advanced party. On the 6th of February 1942, at 11 o'clock, the first Japanese air raids by the IJA 3rd Air Division struck Palembang P-1 airfield. 
After the raids, the Japanese were still unaware of the existence of P-2. By the end of the day, the Japanese shot down two Bristol Blenheims, two Hurricanes, and a further two Hurricanes remained missing. Two Buffaloes were also destroyed on the ground as a result of the raids. The air raids continued for the next two days. The Japanese reported that 69 Allied aircraft were destroyed, on the ground, and on the air. On the 9th of February, when the major part of the Allied air forces in the Palembang area was destroyed, the Japanese decided that date of landing at Palembang was set on the 15th of February. On the 9th of February, at 1900 hours, first escort unit with eight transport ships, carried the advance party, set out from Cameran Bay, Indochina, escorted by the cruiser Sendai and four destroyers. A day later, on the 10th of February, at 1800 hours, the second escort unit left Cameran Bay as scheduled. The second escort unit, which carried the main force, consisted of 14 transport ships, were escorted by the heavy cruiser Chokai, and four destroyers. On the 13th of February, a British reconnaissance plane found a large concentration of Japanese, shipping north of Banker Island. At the same time, many boats, full of British and Australian troops, were fleeing Singapore and found themselves among the enemy vessels which were then being strafed by the occasional Japanese fighter and stranded on a small uninhabited island, north of Banker Island. On the 14th of February, at 8.30 hours, 18 Mitsubishi Ki-57 transport aircraft carrying 180 paratrooper unit of first parachute drop unit departed from Kohang airfield of Malaya, while at the same time, another 12 transport aircraft, carried 120 paratroopers of second and third parachute drop unit departed Kluang airfield. The fourth parachute drop unit, with 40 paratroopers departed Sungai Pitani airfield at the same time and joined the invasion unit. The airborne invasion unit was escorted by a large force of Nakajima Ki-43 fighters from the 59th and 64th Sendai. At 11 o'clock in the morning, the air raid wardens warned Palembang of a big Japanese attack wave formation which was in flight to the town. All available Allied air forces were at that time on missions to protect the sea convoys and were not in radio reach. Firstly, a wave of Japanese bombers dropped its load on airfield P-1. Then, the large escort of fighters swept the aerodrome with machine gun fire. Shortly afterwards, 33 airborne carriers were about to drop two groups of parachutists. 240 Japanese paratroopers were dropped around P-1 airfield, unchallenged. This group were tasked to capture P-1 airfield. Another 100 parachute units landed near the oil refineries. These group were tasked to capture the Plajo refineries. The Japanese surprised airborne attack caught the Allied defender off guard. After engaging in small firefights and setting up a roadblock with overturned vehicles, the Japanese paratroopers persistently attacked the aerodrome P-1 defender, under the command of Wing Commander H.G. Maguire. At the time of the attack, there were only 150 British soldiers manning the anti-aircraft batteries at Palembang and 110 Dutch soldiers drawn from the Sumatra garrison as well as three officers and 72 men of the RF ground defense unit. However, the Allies managed to beat off the Japanese attacks. With the P-1 airfield under attack, the Allied immediately flew all available aircraft to the undiscovered airfield, P-2. At the Plaja refinery, 
the Japanese paratroopers managed to capture the refinery complex, and disarm most of the demolition charges placed in, which had not yet been triggered by the Dutch. And used air raid shelters for entrenched resistance. However, the second oil refinery, the Soinkai refineries was successfully demolished by the Allies. At Plaju, the Japanese paratroopers did not have sufficient strength to hold refinery and were recaptured by the KNIL troops and anti-aircraft crews from the P-2 airfield in a major firefight. The Dutch took heavy losses in the attack. However, the entire action actually bore time for the Japanese, as it delayed any efforts to sabotage the refinery. The planned demolition failed to do any serious damage to the refinery, but the oil stores were set ablaze. On the 15th of February, the Japanese paratroopers were reinforced by an additional airborne landing, involving nearly 100 paratroopers were made in the vicinity of the P-1 airfield, and by afternoon, Palembang town was occupied. The results of the airborne assault were mixed. The IJA airborne troops had suffered around 80% casualties, and had failed to capture and hold their objectives. On the other hand, the airdrops were certainly disruptive, and they had the psychological effect of enveloping the defenders with parachuting enemy troops. Further, the survivors were never decisively defeated, and they managed to elude capture. On the morning of the 15th of February, 1st escort unit arrives at Banka Strait, and began to disembark the troops. The Banka landing unit had left Anchorage at 2.05, while another unit left the Anchorage at the mouth of Moisey River at 3 o'clock, and began the advance up the waterway. The Banka landing units landed at Mentok, and seized the Ifidan Mentok town at 8.30. Although many British soldiers, who had escaped from Singapore, were scattered over the area, none of them put up resistance. At 8 o'clock on the 15th, the Palembang landing units, all together started sailing upstream, and proceeded up the Moisi, Salang, and Tilang rivers towards Palembang, ahead of the naval vessels. Allied airmen, meanwhile, found the narrow confines of the Banka Strait, crowded with a dozen ships and countless landing barges, to be a target-rich environment. In the morning fog, a force of 22 Hurricanes, 35 Blenheims, and a few Hudson bombers that were assembled at Palembang too, which still not yet been discovered by Japanese, departed from the airfield and struck the invasion fleet hard. A tremendous air battle ensued as Hurricanes attacked Japanese bombers, Zeros from the Ujo aircraft carrier attacked RAF bombers, and the Hurricanes and Zeros tangled with one another high over the straits. RAF bombers attacked the landing ships, and a Japanese transport ship was sunk. Another 20 landing craft were sunk, and besides, hundreds of Japanese were killed. Meanwhile, Hurricanes flew up the rivers, and machine gunning unprotected landing craft full of soldiers on the southwest beach of Banka. The Japanese paid a high price for not discovered the secondary airfield, P-2. Meanwhile, Japanese reconnaissance had sighted an the naval force, consisted of five cruisers, and ten destroyers sailing northward through Gasper Strait. The Abda naval force, under the command of Admiral Carol Dorman, were tasked by Abda Com Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Archibald Dwayvel, to make an abortive attempt to intercept the Japanese invasion force. As the Abda naval force sailing to Japanese invasion fleet, the main Japanese convoy was diverted, while the naval surface covering force prepared for action. At the afternoon of the 15th of February, aircraft from Japanese carrier, Yujo, and land-based aircraft at Kuching, attacked the Allied squadron. 
reinforcing doorman surface ships southward with his warships all accounted for. After the attack, the main Japanese convoy headed straight to the mouth of the Moise River, and began moving upstream late in the evening on the 16th of February. The IJ invaders paid a high price, but their superior numbers and their own momentum propelled them forward. Overwhelmed by the Japanese momentum and an enemy in their rear, and under orders from Abda Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Wavell, the remaining defenders torched the petroleum facilities and stocks of rubber. The ferries on the Moise should be destroyed within the next hour so they could not be used by the Japanese. Also the defenders of P-1 airfield were to start a quick retreat. The Dutch commander withdrew his forces to the southwest, and on that day, Field Marshal Wavell arranged a regular retreat to the embarkation of his troops at Oosthaven, where several small ships lay in the harbour. On the afternoon of the 15th of February, all aircraft were ordered to Java on completion of allotted tasks, along with unserviceable aircraft that could fly. Meanwhile, despite the air raids, the Palembang landing units landed on Palembang at 1900 hours on the same day, and relieved the paratroopers on the next day. On the evening of the 16th of February, the Japanese discover a large secret airfield at Prabomuli. The airfield already abandoned by the Allied on the previous day. On the 17th of February, 1,900 British troops, 2,500 RAF service personnel, 700 Dutch soldiers, and 1,000 civilian refugees were evacuated from Moost Haven to Java, by means of 12 ships. The Australian corvette, Burnie, covered the retreat and destroyed harbour facilities and oil tanks. By the 24th of February, the Japanese had secured most of southern Sumatra. IJA and IJN aircraft began using the bases on southeast Sumatra to attack Java. Tenno Elga! Banzai! With southern Sumatra evacuated, the 8,000 Dutch reserve troops and 1,200 paramilitary policemen in northern Sumatra were practically stranded. Most of the surviving Dutch forces in Palembang had withdrawn to the northwest, but many of the native troops deserted to include those of the northwest garrisons that had not yet been engaged. Lacking adequate transportation, the Dutch were dispersed in small groups. They will be engaged by IJ Imperial Guards Division, based at Singapore after the fall of Singapore, which we will cover in a future video. With southern Sumatra now capture, Japanese now had in hand the most prized oil field in Southeast Asia. The Japanese managed to restore production at both main refineries, and these petroleum products were significant in their war effort. This oil field would eventually provide 22% of Japan's fuel oils, and 78% of her aviation gasoline throughout the Pacific War. Meanwhile, with their left flank now secured, the Western force had completed their first objective. Next, they can transport the 16th Army, the invasion force for the Java Island. The airfield at Palembang was put in strength with the arrival of 22nd Air Flotilla. With Sumatra now had been lost, Field Marshal Sir Archibald Wavell, Commander-in-Chief of the Abdecom, recommended his command not be transferred but dissolved. Since the control of the forces in Java would be better exercised by overall Dutch command. The Abda command was terminated. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned on the channel for the future video, press like, leave comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.